So um, let's talk about languages, because of course it's impossible to talk about speech without, of course, realizing that, hey, not everybody speaks English. And as I said, my first language is actually French. I'm French-Canadian from Montreal, and um, there, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this MVA right now, either live or later on the recording, that they also speak other languages and their first language might not be English. So what capabilities are available for them? And I know a lot of people were asking also in the chat room about, um, about Cortana. And yes, it's true, Cortana today is still a technically a preview to it. She's in beta basically. So she was first introduced in uh, the US. I think she's available in Great Britain now also in a few other countries as well. So the rollout is coming. Uh, Cortana is going to reach out to more countries. Joe Belfiore covered also in the Windows 10 keynote how we're going to have support for even more countries. So today, if we look at the speech synthesis languages, these are pretty much all the languages that are covered for speech recognition as well. Um, we have basically 15 languages. And by f languages, we also mean sometimes variants or dialects. So for example, for English, we have the US variant, we have the Great Britain variant, and also there is the Indian variant. For uh, Basically, it changes the accents. The cool thing is it doesn't only affect the text-to-speech, it also affects the speech recognition. Ah. So that later, um, uh, for example, my wife is Indian and she was using an iPhone before, and every time she would try to talk to Siri, well, she really had a hard time being understood by Siri, even though her accent is not that strong. But of course, when it came, uh, she, she's now using a Windows phone, she has for a while, and uh, Cortana works great with her. She, she talks to her, she asks questions, Cortana understands her well. So having these variants in the, in the language for text-to-speech, it's also about some of the known differences in the dialect or the accent of that language in a different country. So these are all the languages that we have on Windows Phone 8.1 today. Um, on Windows 8.1, we actually have one extra language. We have Korean that's also supported. So there's technically 16 languages on uh, Windows. Uh, if you are curious about if your language is supported or if it's coming or things like that, there's a couple links here you can look at. For example, all the speech voices that are supported in Windows 8.1 are listed here. It will also tell you which ones have a male voice, which ones have a female voice. On Windows Phone, it's pretty much everything as male and female, so it's a cool experience. And then if you're also curious about other features of the phone, uh, whether it's speech or non-speech related, and you want to know, is that feature on Windows Phone available in my region, in my country, in my language, there's also a link right here at aka.ms slash WP8 features by region. So you can learn more about these things. So let's start looking at some code, and I'm going to look at some live code, but let's just walk through some of the basics here on how to get started with an application speech synthesis. It's actually quite simple. It all starts, first of all, with the uh, media element. The media element here is actually declared uh, directly in XAML. You could declare it uh, directly in code in C Sharp. So you could simply create like a new media element, and you'll see some samples where I do this. And you, could, you have the option of setting the autoplay property to true. By setting the autoplay property to true, what it's going to do is as soon as you assign a source to that media element, it will automatically start playing. Otherwise, you can control if you want to play, pause, and things like that. Then this is the, the meat, and, and as you can see, it's very thin meat. It's very light. <laughs> it's a light meal. Uh, it's actually quite simple to do speech synthesis. As I said, it's just a few lines of code. You first start by using a speech synthesizer. And then your speech synthesizer will then, uh, you will call the uh, synthesized text to stream async. I love method names like this. <laughs> it is so clear what it does. There's no guessing. You know exactly what it's going to do. You simply pass a string uh, that needs to be synthesized. And then what you get out of this is a stream. And then once you have your stream, you can use that stream as the source of an audio player. The audio player here being a media element. And then once the, this, because we have autoplay set to true, this will automatically start playing. And again, remember that you have to use the, let me just go back here, um, the, the windows.media.speech.synthesis namespace for this. So let me go back <coughs> through this. Okay, sorry for this. Okay, before you can make the phone talk or your device talk, as you know, on Win in Windows Store apps and Windows Phone apps, you need to enable capabilities. The capabilities are basically there to inform the user before they download an application as to how, how much of your device, uh, how much access do you need to give to this app uh, inside of a device. So 
For example, uh, here all the speech SDK features have been lumped into one thing, which is the microphone capability. So it sounds a little weird that to use text-to-speech, you need a microphone because you're not the one talking, it's actually the phone talking. But it's because all the speech SDK features, whether it's text-to-speech or speech recognition, including voice command, are lumped together. And because for voice command and speech, speech recognition, you obviously need the microphone, then that's where it ties in. Uh, there's a slight difference here is that in a Windows Phone 8.1 app, uh, you need to request capab the capability on the microphone, but on the Windows Store apps, it's actually optional. So you can access the microphone in a Windows Store app without necessarily asking for that capability. Uh, not to, sorry, not to access the microphone, but to do text to speech. So in the uh, app, the package that Apex manifest, you can see it right here. The capability is uh, device capability microphone. And of course, internet client server is usually enabled by default. This is something that's going to be required when we want to do speech recognition, especially if we want to use the default grammars we're going to see in module four so that we can use the internet for this. All right, let's look at, uh, let's look at some code. So let me switch to Visual Studio right here. This, um, this space demo is actually quite simple. I mean, it's called Hello Weather. Um, if you're curious about the code, by the way, all the code will be made available for you. Some of it is already live already. It's all going to be in our GitHubs. So I'm at github.com slash activenick. And you're at github.com slash codefoster. Code CodeFoster. And some of your demos are already there. Hello Weather is actually there right now. My other demos, for those that are watching this MVA live, my other demos you're going to see today are not available in my GitHub just yet. Uh, I promise to get to it in the next few days, um, or at the very least by the time the MVA uh, gets posted for download and for, uh, for viewing uh, later. Okay, so let me show you the scenario and how it works here. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'll make a confession, I cheated a little bit on this demo. Because this is a demo that it's basically a, a weather app. It's nothing more than hello world, but it calls a REST service to return weather info. And then once it gets the weather info, it simply displays it on screen and it speaks it out loud. Uh, unfortunately, the weather service I'm using is uh, sometimes not available. It's under the weather. <laughs> it's under the it's under the good one. It's under the weather. So you can see all the information here. I'm using Open Weather Map Service right here. It's a great weather service. I still recommend it. It's just sometimes, for some reason, depending on your connectivity, it, it might not uh, it might not be responsive. So. Uh, you can, you can contact them for information about this. Uh, the bottom line is, what I did is I kind of cheesed my demo a little bit. I, I commented my get weather call right here, and I just basically pre-formatted the string that I normally would be getting back, which is the weather info. Because I figured, you guys want to see a working demo? And the point here is not to show you how to make REST calls and deserialize JSON data. The point is actually to show you how can you make the phone talk. So, what I'm going to do here is, and you can actually change the volume. See these little buttons here? That's the volume up on the emulator. So I can actually raise the volume. So this is hello weather. And I can enter a city right here. For example, Seattle, Washington. Of course, in this case, it's hard coded to Seattle because of my comment I put in. And then when I play this, So you guys heard that? Yeah? Do it, once more. do it once more? Okay, so let's do it one more time. The current temperature in Seattle is 44 degrees Fahrenheit, with a high today of 60 degrees and a low of 41 degrees. Okay, so as I said, this is hard-coded data right now, unfortunately, because the weather service, when I tested before the recording, seemed to be... Uh, a little intermittent there, intermittent, like, like the weather can be intermittent. So um, in terms of, of how we implemented this, it's actually quite simple. So right here, if I look at my code, uh, you'll notice that's why I've got the, the comments here. But when you, if you download this from GitHub, you actually see the full, in, the full info without those comments. So normally, I would call this get weather with the location. And then if my results are not null, then I would start parsing to get the weather uh, the location name and then the temperature, and then the max temperature for the day, and the low. Whereas in this case, I kind of fudged it where I, I hard-coded Seattle 44, 60, and 41 in here. But um, 
and then after that I, I pass in 44 for the big number that was showing up on screen. The key part for reading the weather though is right here. It's read, te read text weather message. So this is just a little helper that I've created and you can basically take this snippet of code and that's actually what I do. I've created a snippet out of it because you can easily take this snippet, put it inside of any application and with the read text you simply pass a string to it and it's self-contained, it does everything for you. You just have to remember to, to put using Speech synthesis. So it's right here at the top, using Windows Media Speech Synthesis. And then, so it, it, what it does, it basically it creates a media element for you. So if it's a media element you're gonna be using a lot, you'll see some of my demos that do this. You can actually do this uh, directly in XAML or you can put it at the global class level. But here, I'm actually doing it inside of read text, and then I create a new speech synthesizer. And uh, next, I can set the voice. If you don't set the voice, it will simply use the default voice on the phone. All phones have a default voice, and it's either set to male or female. I think by default, Windows phones are set to female voice. And the culture of that voice, whether it's the language, uh, is going to vary by country. So if you're in Great Britain, it's going to be the uh, English GB uh, voice. If you're in France, it's going to be the French voice. Italy, Spain. Uh, Spain, well, Mex uh, Spanish actually has two variants. There's the Spanish and the, uh, the Mexican versions of Spanish. So it's going to depend by the, the culture you've set on your phone and where you bought it. Or same thing with Windows, depending on the culture of, in your settings in big Windows. Here in this case, we're actually using Link where we're calling on the speech synthesizer, we can actually access a collection called All Voices. And All Voices returns a collection of voice information objects. And the voice information contains multiple things like the gender, the description, the language, the name of that voice, because all the voices have names. So here we're simply saying, find the first voice where the gender is female and where the description contains United States. So if you try this at home uh, using your own uh, setup with an emulator, the cool, the cool thing is the emulator comes preloaded with all the voices that are available. So doing text-to-speech is one good case where using the emulator works a lot better than using a physical device because on a physical device you're only going to have the languages that are pre-installed. And then uh, we simply call our speech synthesized text to stream async. And once we have that, we simply set the source on our media player. In this case, we don't have autoplay set to true, so we simply call play, and that's it, we're done. The media player takes over, it plays it, plays it. it's asynchronous, by the way. So if you have some something on the next line of code there, it's gonna continue right away. So even though it doesn't say um, play async, the media player plays always asynchronously. So that's for the, uh, the base uh, speech synthesis demo. Let's now dig into a little more into what we can do on how we can manipulate, manipulate our voice. So that was the basic speech synthesis integration. Now, we're gonna look at how can we manipulate the voice settings so that if you're not happy with a default voice, or better yet, if you want to leave the users in control to choose the voice they want, well, this is where we're gonna look at it. So, speech synthesis works with different voices, so all 15 voices, uh, languages on Windows Phone have both a male and a female variant. Most of the languages on Windows are actually going to be uh, female, but a few cultures might have a male voice. Like the uh, English US, of course, has a male voice. I think Great Britain might have one. I'm not sure. It's on that link that I gave you earlier. Um, if you want to install a new voice on the phone, the way it, well, either on the phone or on Windows, uh, you have to go to the speech settings on the phone. So you go to settings, and you scroll down, you go to speech, and then you're going to see right here, there's gonna, you're going to have text-to-speech voice. You choose between male or female, and then you have to choose the language you want to use. That language is going to be the default language of your phone. This is where, when you click on that, you're going to see this list right here, and you're going to see all the voices you can download and the download size for them. So if you see a download size for them, it means that voice has not been installed yet. Uh, before you try this at home right now or at work and you start installing, remember that installing a new language on Windows Phone is considered an operating system update. So it will download the voice, it will then say you have to do an update, it will reboot the phone, and then it has to go through the data migration and everything. Depending on how much data you have in your phone, your phone could be out of commission anywhere from 20 to 30, maybe even 45 minutes or an hour. I've seen it. 
So don't go and install a new language on your phone uh, if you need to use your phone in the next hour, I would say. It's a safe bet. On Windows 8.1, it's the same thing. You can go to language settings, add a language, and you have to download what's called a language pack. The language pack, the language pack allows you to change the, the, the default culture of the UI in Windows to different languages. But even if you don't change the UI, you can still install a language pack, which comes with the voices. So for example, on my own computer, I've installed a French voice. Even though I keep Windows in English, I like having the option of having the French voice so that I can use it since, well, I speak French. And you do too, right? Some. Some, Some yeah. Un petit peu. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, and um, so remember that your apps can then access any voice that's already been installed, it can then be accessed programmatically. If, you, if a voice was not installed by the user, then your app won't have access to it. And you also don't have any options to go and download voices programmatically so that you can kind of override the user's decision. It's entirely up to the users. If your app needs to require, basically requires additional languages, it's going to be up to you to guide the user to say, hey, if you want more voices, more languages, uh, this is how you go into your phone settings and download this. So let's look at another uh, cool little demo that I have. Uh, this, uh, we can look at the speech settings, although I pretty much already demoed this. But you can scroll down, for example, uh, and go to the settings. So if I scroll down,